Hello, my name is Endless Barrage, and I'm here reading hot takes from people that I asked. So basically, it's going to be a hot takes video. I'm going to add my hot takes as well. But first, I'm going to read off hot takes that people sent to me. Okay, let's get into it. And for every single hot take, I'll give, like, reasonings for why that hot take should be agreed with. Now, I won't agree with every single hot take. Most of these hot takes I won't agree with. But uh, I'll try to make a very compelling argument for someone to agree with that uh, argument. Okay, let's start with my Uncle Judd's hot take, and he explained it all out for me, so I don't have to, like, give a reasoning, which is very, very nice. He says that the game has changed for the worse. He thinks the league is too weak now. Players are talented, but mentally and physically weaker than years ago. Too many weak fouls are called, and players flop too much. The regular season doesn't mean as much to players as it used to. Defense during the season is weak. Star players are paid way too much, taking money away from other from other key players. Yeah, the uh, game today has gotten way uh, softer than years ago in the 90s, 80s, 2000s. Uh, and he does say players are more talented now, which is a fact. Like, you would never say the 60s is as talented as the 90s. So, why would the 90s be as talented as the 20s? So yeah, players are more talented, and that's what he says. Uh, too many weak fouls. Yeah, players flop too much. It's like they're they're babying the superstars, really. Also, watch it. Defense during the season a week. That is definitely true, and it shows in the playoffs. Uh, teams are averaging like close to 100 points a game in the re in the uh, regular season. They're averaging like 115, 120. So that just shows defense is turned up in the playoffs, and they don't really care about defense in the uh, regular season. And star players are paid way too much. Uh, yeah, they are paid way too much. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't really understand why they get paid so much. Why would you want $300 million instead of, like, $280 million to get some other role players in there? That doesn't make any sense. So... Like a perfect example, Jalen Brown, he got a $300 million contract. Jalen Brown is not worth $300 million. Now me, if I was playing in the NBA, I'd be worth $300 million. I'd probably be worth like $450, but let's not get into that. Next hot take comes in from my friend Ephraim. He says that the Heat will win this series over the Celtics. And as I'm recording this yesterday, the Heat just tied up the series 1-1. And they're going back to Miami for games three and four, so it could definitely happen. Now, without superstar Jimmy Butler and solid score Terry Rozier, it will be significantly harder. But they got that. Uh, they got the Celtics number. They uh, they upset them in the Commerce Finals last year, and uh, in 2020 they uh, set them in the in the Commerce Finals. And in 2022, they almost beat them in the Commerce Finals. So, they're up 2-1 on the Celtics uh, over the past four years. Yeah, four years. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be definitely harder, though, without uh, two of your best scores. I could definitely see a world where they split uh, they, they split games three and four, so it's tied 2-2 going back to the Celtics uh, arena for game five. And then the Celtics are under 500 in the last uh, two postseasons uh, at home. So they lose more than 50% of the time at home. So they could in, they could uh, go back for game six with the heat up 3-2. It could definitely happen. Now the Celtics are the best team in the league by, by a good margin. Uh, so this will be a tall task. But you can't count out the heat. You just can't count out the heat. Now, with Jimmy Butler, I'd say maybe they just get it done the way they're playing right now. But he's out, which sucks. Next hot take comes from my friend Richie. He says that Kobe Bryant is better than LeBron James. And even though I don't agree with it, there, there could be an argument. Just like with every player that's, like, near the top ten. There can be an argument for anyone over anyone. So, I'm going to make the argument. So, Kobe Bryant has more championships than LeBron James. He has five to LeBron's four. He's a better scorer than LeBron James, some would say. Uh, he never switched teams to get his uh, rings. 
LeBron went from Cleveland to Miami to get his first two, then back to Cleveland to get his uh, third, and then he went to L.A. to get his fourth. Uh, yeah, Kobe won back-to-back -back championships without another All-Star. LeBron's never done that. Kobe averaged 35 in a season. LeBron hasn't even averaged 32. So, it, you can could, you could see the argument. Now, it's, it's really tough because, <sighs> because I, I don't agree with it, but I'm playing devil's advocate, if that's, if that's uh, what it's called. I don't really know. I'm just trying to sound smart here. Uh, I think that's what it's called. Uh, I, I'm just trying to uh, make a compelling argument. Now, I don't think this is that hot of a take, and what I mean by that is uh, a lot of people do think Kobe Bryant's better than LeBron James, and most of that is uh, from nostalgia, or they don't like LeBron, or they think Kobe's game is more appealing, or Kobe copied MJ, and he's the closest thing to MJ, and MJ's the GOAT, so obviously Kobe has to be second, so yeah, I wouldn't say it's too hot of a take. But for people, you know, never. I'm not. I'm not gonna go there. I'm. I'm, I'm trying to make a compelling argument. I'm not. I'm not gonna go there. Uh, so that's that's my friend Richie's hot take. The next hot take comes from my brother Drew. He says LeBron is the best scorer of all time, and you can make a very compelling argument that this is actually the case. Starting with he has the most points in NBA history. Uh, he's averaging over 25 points in his age in his uh 21st season. He's almost 40 years old. He's averaged over 25 points every single year of his career since he was uh, in his second year of the league. So from year two to year 21, he's averaged over 25 points a game. No other players even got to like 16, I think. I think second closest is KD, I'm pretty sure. Uh, he averages 27 points per game while being a quote-unquote pass for his player. Like he says he is, and I'll, I'll take his word for it. I'll, I'll take his word for it. Uh, yeah. He has the most career playoff points, and some would say it's longevity, but you got you to gotta make the playoffs all those years to, you know, uh, get all those playoff points. He, and he, he broke the record, like, five years ago. He's, he's made the playoffs every single year, except for, like, one, I think. Yeah, except for one. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, he's, he's really efficient. He has the fourth highest scoring uh, points per game in NBA history as a pass first player. Uh, he has the most points ever, so, I mean, you could definitely make the argument. Now, this one I don't agree with either, but I'd say LeBron is, is close to top five. I'd say he's close to top five, uh, at best. Uh, and you gotta realize, my brother Drew is the biggest LeBron supporter I know. I'm, I'm being so serious. I'm, I'm not I'm not going to get too I'm not, I'm not going to call him out for too much but I I needed to say something because that, that it's, it's it's a good hot take though it's a good hot take not not many people agree with it it's my brother Drew's hot take This next hot take comes from my uh friend Wesley he says the Warriors will win the finals next year uh and this is probably the hottest hot take on uh this list because this is going to be tough to argue, but I'll, I'll try. I'll try to make a compelling argument. Definitely will. So, obviously, you got Stephen Curry, okay? Uh, he He's one of the greatest players of all time. You got Draymond Green, who is who puts up LeBron uh, rebounds and assists, but he scores 20 less points. But you don't need the scoring when you got Steph Curry. Uh, they got a developing young core, Jonathan Kaminga, uh, Brandon Podzemski, Trace Jackson Davis. He's been playing really good. Uh, so, unlike years before, they have a really good developing um, young court. And they, they still got the big three. Now, we don't know if Klay Thompson is going to get traded or released in free agency. We don't know that until probably like this summer. So, I mean, I, I what, what we do know is that Curry and Draymond Green are going to be back. Now, that that is good enough to win another championship. It really is, uh, especially with that young court that I was talking about. Jonathan Kaminga, in my opinion, should be top three and uh, most improved player, even though he isn't. Uh, Trey Jackson Davis will be a solid center for years to come. He's had, he has a good career ahead of him. Uh, and 
they they weren't like I mean, okay, so they missed the playoffs this year, but they weren't a bad team. They won 46 games. It's just the West was so stacked this year. Last year, if they if they had won 46 games, they would have been the fourth seed. They would have had home court advantage in the first round. That's how good they were this year. It's just the the West was so much better than it was last year. So it's not like they got that much worse. I, I think they actually increased their win total. So they're they're in an upward trajectory, and their win total last year was lower than this year. And last year they made it to the second round. So it's definitely not over. It's it's definitely not over. I I just I just made the best argument possible. You're welcome, uh, Wesley. You're welcome. <laughs> Do good at this. Okay, next hot take comes from my uncle Darian, who is a delusional Pacers fan. So just keep that in mind. He says Pascal Siakam will lead the playoffs in scoring and this is possible he's dropped 30 plus in each game uh so far in the first round series against the bucks so if if they're if he's talking about uh, like total points they'll have to make a deep platform probably the nba finals unless siakam goes nuclear with his uh, scoring averages but if you're talking about like points per game that's definitely possible the way he's playing uh halliburton has been playing good he's uh siakam's the main focus uh in the, in the half court offense so it could definitely happen. It, it could definitely happen. So, I'll, I'll, even if they lose to the Bucks, if Siakam averages like 33 points a game, uh, that that could definitely be it. Because say say another player in the first round averages like 33 points a game or like 34, but they make it to the second round and then they they get a little bit worse in the second round. That means their points per game will drop off, which means since Siakam would be out if if they lose in the first round. His points will stay at 33, but others might drop even if they finish higher than Siakam in the first round. But if, if you're talking playoff points, that is a really that is a really steaming hot take. It's hot, boiling really. It's it, it's a boiling because the Pacers making the NBA Finals that'd be tough. Now they they'd have to go. I mean, if if they win the series against the Bucks, I could see them making the Conference Finals because I don't really trust the Knicks. Uh, they're without Julius Randle. They got OG and Anobi back, but I don't trust the Knicks. So, but they they could, they could make the Commerce Finals if they win the series against the Bucks. It's tied one one as of uh, this recording. So, if they make the Commerce Finals, they'll most likely have to play the Celtics. So, and they got absolutely violated against the Celtics this season violated <laughs> their dignity is gone when they play the celtics so that, that'd be tough they'd probably have to get like an injury to the celtics uh roster for them to actually have a chance to like a key player but there's that's not out of the question now i, I don't wish injuries on people but that's the best way the Pacers can make the nba final since siakam will be the leading scorer in the playoffs for total points if he keeps it up which he might he might that's my hot take that's that's, that's not my hot take that's darian's hot take uh, by the way, Delusional Pacers fan, just letting you know, for anyone who's watching this. The next hot take comes from my mom, and she has three hot takes. So, she went, she, she went above and beyond. Uh, the first hot take is the Mavs will make the NBA Finals. Uh, I could see this. I could definitely see this the way they're playing now. They're tied 1-1 with the Clippers right now. And I do think, I, sorry, I was burping for some reason. I, I do think the uh, I do think the Mavs will beat the Clippers. So, and if if the uh, if if they do make it to the second round and say we assume the Thunder make the second round, I I think the Mavs will beat the Thunder as well. Thunder are inexperienced. They they don't have size. They don't have good rebounding. The Mavs have Daniel Gafford and P.J. Washington, so I can see that happening. Now, the biggest thing would be who comes out of the lower side of the bracket, Timberwolves or Nuggets, because that'd be a really tough matchup for uh, the Mavs for either team. Uh, now, she just doesn't say that the Mavs will win the finals. She just says that she'll make it that they'll uh, make it out of the West. That's definitely possible. Definitely possible. It, it would uh, it would uh get Luka some more recognition in the playoffs, even though he's a great playoff uh, performer. Now, her uh, next hot take, uh, her next hot take is Luka will win MVP. Now, this isn't really a hot take. I'm going to be honest. This isn't really a hot take. Uh, it'd be a hot take to me because I think Jokic will win. But 
most people do like most people like on the internet on social media whatever like in person do think Lucas should be the MVP just looking at his numbers and it's it, like nobody has ever averaged what Luka is averaging this season nobody's ever averaged even 33 8 and 8 Luka's averaging 34 9 and 9 ba basically 34 9 and 10 really so yeah it, I mean what what people's excuses were that or that the, uh, the Mavs weren't as good. This year they won 50. They, they won 50 times. They had 50 wins this season. 50. And Lucas putting up these numbers. And he, and he played a good amount of games. So it could definitely happen. And our uh, next one is that Wimby will win defensive player of the year. Now this is, this is also not a hot take. It's it's a hot take against the uh, betters. Against the uh, odds makers. Because they think uh, Gobert's going to win it. But... To again, like like Luca, in social media, on the internet, in real life, do, people do think Wimby won, will uh win DPOI, and they, they think he deserves it because of how gaudy his uh, blocks and steals are, and yeah, that that makes sense. He uh when Wimby's off the court, his team is a 24th ranked defense. When he's on the court, from from 100 possessions, he is they're the fourth ranked defense. So they jump up 20 spots when Wimby's on the court. He's a plus seven on defense uh, for on-off uh, rating, which is by far the best in the league. So, I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that Wimby is the single best defender in the league. But DPOY is thought of as it's thought of the same thing as MVP. You got to win games, and Wimby only won 20 games or something like that, 22 games. But it could, it could definitely happen. It could definitely happen. And, yeah. He, he averages the most blocks per game. He averages the second most steals per game for a center. Only behind Nikola Jokic. And he's only a rookie. And like people will say rookie bias, rookie bias. Uh, well, I guess not rookie bias, but they're, they're biased against a rookie. Because he's only a rookie. And rookies should never win awards. Because uh, it's only their first year. Wimby's a different player. This is a different rookie. This is a generational, inspirational, sensational talent. And uh, this is going to be fun to watch him in the next 20 years. He, he'll, he will probably break the DPOY record, and it might start this year. It might start this year. So that's my mom's three hot takes. This next hot take is from my uh, friend Tyler. He says that Stephen Curry is top 10 ever. Now, this is also not a a big hot take. It would it'd be, again, a hot take to me because I don't think Curry's top 10 ever. But... Most people do think Curry has solidified himself as a top 10 player of all time. Personally, I'd have him at 12th. So, yeah. Now, it is a very good argument. You, you can make a very good argument that he's the best point guard of all time. And, some, like, 90, 99% of people would say the best point guard of all time, to, some, to most people, Magic Johnson, uh, is top 10. So, yeah, I, most people would say he's top 5, really. So, you can definitely make a compelling argument that Curry's top to number, and you know what? I'll just do it right now. So let, let's let's let's, uh, let's get started. Okay, so Curry has four rings. He went to the finals five straight years. Five straight years he went to the finals. Um, he has a finals MVP. So before he won his fourth championship in 2022. People would dock him uh, for not winning a Finals MVP and saying that he got carried by Kevin Durant and that he lost out on the Finals MVP in 2015 to Andre Iguodala, who was a role player. So, yeah, even though, personally, I think Curry should have two Finals MVPs uh, in 2015 and in 2022. So, but that, that didn't go that way. He has one Finals MVP, four championships. He has maybe the best regular season performances of all time. Back in 2016, when he when he revolutionized the game, and that's another point, he revolutionized the game of basketball. So yeah, that's also a pretty big point. In the 2006-07 season, teams were averaging just under 17 threes attempted per game. Now in 2017, 10 years later, and the reason why I picked 2017 uh, was because in 2016 Curry had possibly the best regular season of all time when when his team went 73 and 9 he was the he was the unanimous league MVP and he uh shot 11 threes per game on 45% shooting so that's probably the I mean, he broke the record for threes made in the season with like tw 
with like 30 games left. He was the first uh, player to ever shoot to ever make 400 threes in a season. No other player at that time made over 300. He was the first 400 before someone even got the 300. That's how good he was at shooting threes before everyone else. So 2007, just just a little under 17 threes a game. Now 2017, the year after he went for all that, teams were averaging 27 threes a game. That is so ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. That's how much Stephen Curry revolutionized the game of basketball. So, <laughs> yeah. Now, some people would say, oh, he had Kevin Durant for two of his rings. Now, 2017, KD was the best player in that series. 2018, you can make an argument for uh, Curry. You can make an argument for Curry. Now, what... Now, what brings it over the top for people to say Curry's top 10 is that he won a championship at, I think it was 34 years old. I think it was 34. Went on a magical run. Uh, now, some people would say injured. The teams that he beat in the 2020 finals are injured. Every every team gets injured in the, in the playoffs. You can say that for every single champion. Every single, like the 2019 Raptors. Curry, uh, the Warriors were injured in the finals. Or, yeah, they, they would have lost 2021 Bucks. The Nets were injured in the second round. If the Nets were healthy, they would have lost. The Bucks would have lost, so you can say that for every single team. Uh, so I, I don't really like that argument. I don't. I really don't. So that's. I mean, I, I made such a good argument that I, 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 I want to put Curry top ten. Nah, I won't do it because I want to. I want to stand by my. Uh, I want to stand by my opinions. But I made such a good argument that I, I just might want to switch, but I won't. I won't. I, I won't do it. So that is uh, my friend Tyler's hot take. Okay, so now for my hot takes. Now my first, I, I I got two hot takes. Now my first hot take is that Kobe Bryant is in top ten all time, and I I have five bullet points. I just I just typed them out on Google Doc. I I just did it. So here you go. My first reasoning is that three out of his five championships, he wasn't the best player, and that's because of Shaq. Now, people like to say that he got carried. The only year that Kobe Bryant actually got carried in the in the uh, playoffs was in 2001 and 02. He was. A completely different player, a superstar, one of the best players in the league. So I, I won't go that far and say he got carried, but he was the clear, definite number two to Shaq. Uh, so yeah, my second reason is that in the in the 04 finals, he choked against the Pistons as when when the Lakers at that time they thought they were a super team, and most people around the media, every everywhere, they said that the 04 Lakers were a super team. They were heavily favored against the Pistons, and they lost in five games, and that's mainly because of Kobe. He shot under 40% from the field. Under 40% from the field. He shot 38% from the field. I, th I, he was just chucking up shots, and that that's because of his ego. And he he even said that he was mad, uh, for everyone. He say Kobe Bryant himself said that he was uh. He, he was pissed off, really. So, my my third reasoning was that he blew a three-one lead against the Suns in 06. And people would and, and people would say, oh, the Suns were the better team, anyways. If you're up three-one, are are they really a better team? If you're if you're already up three-one in the playoffs, are you really a better team? Now, in hindsight, yeah, the Suns were a better team, but you you just gotta win one game out of the next four to move on to the second round, and that was season he averaged 35 points per game. And the first three games, he, he played really good. First four games, even he played played really good. That's why they were up three one. The last three games, though, that's why they lost. Uh, that, that's why they uh lost three straight to lose the series. Cause Kobe Bryant, uh, because in game four, I'm pretty sure he dropped 50 points in game four or something like that. He definitely dropped 50 points in one of the games. So I'm pretty sure it was game four. And people people were saying, oh, Kobe doesn't pass the ball. He's a ball hog. So from games five through seven. He tried to make a point and say, oh, I do pass the ball. And he averaged like 22 points per game over that three-game span. That's why they lost. Kobe isn't a pass-first player. He needs to do what he does best, and that, that is scoring. But he didn't do it because he wanted to prove other uh, other people wrong. Uh, and that's what cost him the series. Next one is that he has dominant scoring in the regular season, but in the postseason, not so much. Uh, uh, so he only has one 50-point game in the postseason. That and he has so many in the regular season. If he if he's one of the best scorers ever, why can't he uh why can't he be dominant in the postseason when there's better defenses, they're more locked onto him and he plays more minutes. Why why can't he do it? Why can't he do it? And uh my last one is that he only has one MVP. Now people will say, Oh, he, he was robbed of MVP. He should have had five or six. No. Some people would say he doesn't even deserve one. Because in 08 when he won, people would say Chris Paul was better than him. 
people would say LeBron James is better than him. Now, I won't go that far because I, 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 first, I think he deserves one, and that was his best shot of winning. His team was good. He was good. There was no clear-cut favorite, so I think, I think he gets it, but you can make a very compelling argument that Chris Paul gets it or LeBron. So like other years that people say he was like better than everyone else was like 06. You could you could say 06, but his team record wasn't there. But like at the same time, it doesn't really matter that much. The guy averaged 35 points a game. And he carried his team to the playoffs. And now I don't know. Well what what really did happen was that he only won one MVP, and I don't think he was robbed. If if, if you really want to get technical, take away his 08 MVP, give give him the 06 MVP, and then still has one. But I don't think he deserves anything else. So that's my reasoning. So now I will say, I am not a Kobe Bryant hater. I actually have him 11th all time. Now for my next hot take, it is that Will Chamberlain is top three all time. And again, I have five bullet points to explain my reasonings. Number one, he is the most dominant scorer ever, and people will say, "Oh, it was the pace of play. The pace of play was 30 possessions higher in the 60s than it was in the, in the 2000s, 2020s, whatever." Uh, name one player who was doing any even anything close to Will Chamberlain in the 60s that is the biggest gap between the f the best score and the second best score ever so like he averaged 50 points per game no other player even averaged 30 i think it was i think he has the, like the five highest scoring averages in the 60s and there were some dominant scores in the 60s elton baylor jerry west bob pettit so that that's that's number one number two he was the best passing big man ever until Jokic came around and that is a fact some people say Sabonis, like Arvidas Sabonis. No. It is it is uh Will Chamberlain. He averaged, I'm pretty sure, eight assists over a three year span. He averaged twenty-four points, twenty-four rebounds, and eight assists, or something around there, over a three year span when he was at the 76ers. Name one player who's doing that today. Na name one. Or any time ever. Like it is just so ridiculous. Now, obviously, Jokic is the best is the best passing big man ever today. But back in the '60s and until today, so for like 60 years, he was uh, Ch Chamberlain was considered the best passing big man ever. Now, for my third one, he is the most dominant rebounder ever. Now, this is this is almost not even debate. Now, some people would say, "Oh, Den Dennis Rodman, Dennis Rodman. He he averaged almost 19 rebounds per game for uh, one of the slowest eras." Put Will Chamberlain against Dennis Robin. Who do you think is getting more rebounds? That's what I thought. Will Chamberlain, a guy who's 7'1", 275 pounds of pure muscle. That's the guy who's the best rebounder ever. He averaged 27 rebounds per game uh, in his first two seasons and then toned down to like 25. I say toned down. Nobody ever has even averaged 25 point, uh, rebounds per game. But <laughs> that, that, that was a downgrade for Will. That's how dominant he is. He has the most rebounds ever. He has the most. He has the highest rebounds per game average. He has the highest single season rebounds. He has the highest single game rebounds. So like, it's obviously Will. Now the next he's a top three defender ever. Now, uh, like a year ago I said he was the best defender ever. I think Bill Russell and Hakeem Olajuwon are better than Will Chamberlain at defense, but he's still a top three defender ever. That is a big, big flex. So you're the most dominant scorer ever, and you're a top three defender ever. How's he not top three? Now there, there have so. They didn't count blocks and steals back in the 60s until uh, the mid-70s. But the most trusted statistician, Harvey Pollock, tracked 112 games of Wilt's career. He averaged nine blocks a game in those 112 games. That, that is so ridiculous. People say, oh, blocks aren't everything. When you're averaging nine blocks a game, that is everything. That's ridiculous. That is so absurd. So... Yeah, and like, how how can you tell me a guy who's seven foot one, with around like a forty inch vertical, who's two hundred seventy five pounds of pure muscle, isn't a top three defender ever? Just go watch the film, which I, I know none, I know none of the people watching this uh, video watch uh, film on Walter because who would, except for me? Because I'm addicted to the sports. I'm addicted. Please help me. Actually, don't help me, because I I I can't get off. I I, I can't get off these sports. I, I'm addicted. I'm addicted. Now, for my last point, he led two of the greatest regular season teams ever to a championship. First one being the 67-76ers. They went 68-13 and when it was an 81-game season. I don't know why it was 81 games. That's pretty weird. Uh, they led him to he led him to a 68-13 and record. They beat the Celtics, who at that point won eight straight championships. That's how good the 76ers were that year with Will Chamberlain, who won MVP that year. They beat the Celtics, who won eight straight championships in the, uh, I think it was the... 
Eastern Division Finals, that's what it was called. Uh, and they ended up winning the championship against the Warriors. And then in 1972, when he was on the Lakers, they, uh, that team won 69 games out of 82, so 69 and 13. That, that was the best regu regular season record until the 96 Bulls, so 25 year uh, span that he led the greatest team ever to a championship. So, yeah. And both, I mean, he won finals MVP in 1972, but in, in uh, 67, they didn't have finals MVP. So, I mean, he, he would have won it there. So, he has, like, he has the postseason dominance. He has the regular season dominance. He has the scoring dominance in the postseason and the regular season. Like, he dropped 56 points. He dropped 50 points four times in the postseason. People say, oh, he was a terrible playoff performer. No, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. So those are my reasonings for Will Chamberlain being top three ever. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, this is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, this was really fun to make. I asked so many people for their hot takes. Uh, I might do another one of these maybe next year. So I'll be looking forward to that. I hope you have a great day. Goodbye.